Hello. Today we're going to do some cascade impact of suppressors. We're going to look at uh, initial stage of this light bulb, which could represent your electronic equipment without any suppression upstream, and then examine what happens downstream when we insert uh, the suppression into the network, into the system, and we'll judge the impacts. Okay, here we have our setup. We've got the initial light bulb coming right out of the surge generator, downstream into the Sontamer suppressor. Between that and the light bulb at the end is approximately uh, 10 to 12 feet of, of wire. So we're going to start with the 100 kilohertz ring wave. And from previous tests we've seen that between seven, possibly up to eight or nine ring wave impulses will cause the first light to fail. Then we'll look at what happens downstream when we change to the combination wave. We have a ready to test light. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Amazing the positive impact that introducing the sign chamber into this system has on the upstream equipment. We've now reached about 20 impulses without any change whatsoever in the upstream light bulb. Now, let's remove the sign chamber from the circuit and then see what happens. Okay, now if you notice, we've removed the suppressor from the circuit. And we'll see what impact now these ring wave transients have on the initial level and the secondary equipment. One, two, three, fourth impulse. You can see the degradation that the ring waves have had. Nine, 10, 11, 12 total impulses has damaged both, uh, both light bulbs, both pieces of electronic equipment. Now we'll reintroduce two new light bulbs, the suppressor, and change the combination wave. Okay, we're back now. We have changed the surge generator to the combination wave, 6KV, 3KA. Reintroduced the sign tamer into the circuit. Now let's see what happens as we begin to release the surges. One, typically one, one 6,000 volt transient destroys the light bulb. But the positive benefit of the side, downstream sound tamer suppressor can be seen. Ready to test? Second impulse, still survived. Generator charging again. Third impulse, still protected by the downstream suppressor. Charging again. Ready to test light. Fourth impulse, still protected. Ready to test light. Fifth impulse, still protected. As the generator charges again, it's important to note that the initial impact of the surge is causing degradation on the first level of equipment. It is receiving residual protection from the downstream suppressor, but it is not totally protected, as you'll see as we continue to surge. Sixth impulse. Seventh impulse. Ready to test. Eighth impulse. Ready to test. Ninth impulse. Our tenth impulse, still protect. Now what we're going to do is we'll add some distance between the first level light bulb and the suppressor. We'll be right back. Okay, now what we've done is we've replaced this first level light bulb with a brand new bulb. And we've reversed where the suppressor is. The sound hammer is now approximately 12 feet away from the surge. Let's see what kind of benefit can be obtained now with the suppressor sound hammer is farther downstream. Ready to test. media failure. So what we see here is that the farther away 
the sine hammer is from the load, the less positive impact is going to be had for this, for the first level of equipment. So the necessity is to go ahead and have a cascade approach in all of your electronic uh, cabinets, your control cabinets. This will provide the optimum level of protection for all of your electronic equipment. Thank you.